All right, in uh, 30-2, we have a few different types of applications of exponential functions. So what I mean by applications is like everyday, everyday situations, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through some of those different situations. So these are in your notes, you guys can refer back to these, um, but I'm just gonna kind of explain along the way. So one of these types is questions that deal with exponential growth, okay? So an example of this is if, if you saw five lilies on the pond and determined that the lilies reproduced by 35% per week, what is the general equation for the number of lilies after X number of weeks? So saying, let's look at uh, the general exponential equation, right? So this is kind of our starting place. So we have Y is equal to A times B to the power of X. And we've been graphing those things, right? Um, okay, so A, your A value here is going to be your starting point, right? So that's where you're starting. And let, let's make sense of this too, right? If I threw a number in, just to remind you guys about graphing these, if this was y is equal to three times two to the power of x, then why is this our starting point? Well, that's when x is equal to zero, right? This was, if we graph this thing, this was the graph that looked like this and went up. And where it crosses was our a value. That's our starting point, okay? That's the value of y when x is zero. So if you threw a zero in there, that'd be two to the power of zero, which is one, so that'd be three. Okay, so it's for that reason that when we do these questions, your A value is where we start, right? So that'd be like the number of lilies to begin with, right? Your B value is the rate of change. So the rate of change when we get going here is going to, uh, it's going to be described by this, in this case, 35%, right? Well, I'll show you what to do with that, like how we make it increase by 35%, but this is our rate, 35% per week. So that's gonna relate to our B value x is the time in weeks right so this is going to be your time so this is my x axis going this way then this is my time going going this way right x is my time it could also be written as t so sometimes you'll see it as um I don't know, like n is equal to let's say three times two to the power of t so instead of an x it might be a t but same idea right and then your y is the amount that you're getting out, right? So like always with our functions, I put in some value for my time and I get out some value for my for my y value, or for my number of lilies in this case. Okay, so if we're gonna do this, or figure this one out, it's gonna we're gonna start with um, finding our a and our b value. So if we start with five lilies, then we can say our a value is five. That's where we're starting with, right? Five lilies on the pond. So we can say y is equal to five, and then I just gotta figure out my B value. So I'll just write this B to the X for now. And then what's our B value? That's that's kind of the like the probably the tougher part of this or the one that people forget. So it's so the number of lilies goes up by 35% per week. Okay? So what our B value would be, well here let me let me just re reset for a second. What if I have Y is equal to five and then times and what if I made my my B value one? right? So one to the power of, and then um, X would be like anything, right? So that could be like, you know, 5,000 years, right? It wouldn't really matter, but it's, it'd still be one, right? One to the power of anything is just one. So where I'm getting at with this is if I made this one, that just gets me to where I started, right? That's like just accounting for me keeping my five lilies or just starting at five lilies. So what I'm going to have to do for my B value here is it's gonna be one is my starting place and then plus my percentage. But we don't write percentages as you know 35% like that. In math, we like to write them as a decimal. So this would be one plus 0.35, right? Where you started and then an additional 35%. And then that is to the power of X. Now that's kind of an awkward way to write it so instead, we'd write it as y is equal to 5 times, and then 1 plus 0 0.35 is 1.35x. Do you see the pattern there that since it went up by 35%, it's going to be just 1.35? Okay, so just remember that. It just has to be that 1 in there as well, which makes sense because now if I start putting numbers in, right, if I put in like a 1 into that, then that would be 5 times 1.35. 
if I put a 2 in for that, that's going to be 5 times 1.35 to the power of 2. My numbers are getting bigger and bigger, and they would follow a graph like this, right? It's going to be going up over time, okay? If this number you had was like 0 0.35, like so you've made that mistake, then that would be getting smaller, right? That would actually give you a graph like this that was going down. So that wouldn't be right, okay? So it's 1.35. All right, doubling time questions. So doubling time questions are actually just a variation of a growth problem. So let's say the number of lilies from the above example are growing by 100% per week. Well, this would really mean that our lilies are doubling every week, right? So again, like in the last example, that would be like five, or sorry, y is equal to five times. And then when we were figuring out our B value, one is where you started, but if it's going up by 100%, it's like I'm going plus one, isn't it? Like another another whole one, and then to the power of x. So that's really just five times two to the power of x, which really is just our doubling, right? So this is how we do doubling questions. So it doubles in this amount of time, okay? So now when you're looking at this, the x value in this case actually refers to the to the number the amount of doubling times that have occurred okay so however you may look at a pond after 4.5 weeks right so in that case what we could do is we could replace x with x over t where x is the time that's passed and t is the doubling time so in general for a doubling time equation or a half-life that, that we're going to be doing here in a minute too um, we can write it out like, like so. So this would be y is equal to a, and then since it's doubling time, we just know that we're going to be using 2, right? Because of the nature of the question for doubling time. And then it's going to be x over t, where your x is the amount of time that actually passes, so that'd be like 4.5 weeks, and your t would be the amount of time for, um, for it to double. And in this case, it doubles every week, right so that would just be one because x is the number of weeks that go by so yeah so that's the idea on those ones okay so then that yeah that would be your general equation um would be would be this one yeah okay all right and then there's some more examples so you can look through those to to uh, set those ones up um, well, here, maybe I'll actually walk you through what, uh, what they're doing in this question. So it says, Sam deposits $500 into a, a savings account that pays 2.4%, um, and then that slash A means um, per annum, like per year, compounded annually. A function that models the growth of the deposit is, and they've actually just given it to us this time. So that's, that's easy. They never made us make it like we, we were in the last one. So it says where y is the value of the investment, so that's what y is, in dollars, and x is the number of years since the deposit was made. All right, so now it says determine how long to the nearest year that it will take for the investment to be worth at least $800. Okay, so in this case, right, they're saying how long will it take? So if this is our equation, y is equal to 500 times 1.024 to the power of x, if it's asking for how long, what they want is they want us to solve for X, right? That's our time. And they say to make $800. Well, that's the value of the investment. So this would be 800 is equal to 500 um, times 1.024 to the power of X. And now we need to solve for X. So that's why we were doing what we were doing in the last lesson, right? We can use logarithms to solve for this. Um, we could, or, or I'll show you two ways, right? We'll use logarithms and we could also graph it, right? So in order to solve for X, remember, we got to take like the log of both sides. So we can do that. But the other thing we can do here um, to make life a little easier, why don't I get rid of this 500 first, right? So I'll divide both sides by 500. So divide by 500, okay? So that ends up being, well, they did it for us, 1.6, right? So 1.6 and that's equal to, 1.0, you don't even need the brackets anymore, 1.024 to the power of x. All right, so from there, well, remember we need that x down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the log 
of both sides. And I'm going to use our uh, common log here. So log, just log, really base 10, right, of that. Okay, so then in that case, now that we've taken the log of both sides, remember now that that x gets to move down, right? That's, what, that's one of our log laws, so it gets to come down. So what we have left is, here, I'm going to write it up here, um, log base, or base 10, or just our common log of 1.6, is equal to x and then log 1.024. And then we only really have one step from here, right? Because now we just need x on its own. So I'm going to divide both sides by log 1.024. So those cancel and then this side would be the same, log 1.024. And then you actually could leave your answer like that, right? That's the most accurate version of the answer. But, you know, if we're actually talking about number of years, I can't really see how many years that is. So if we put this into our calculator, then we would get approximately, we get X is approximately equal to 19.8, right? So 19.8 years. All right, so that's how we can use, do it using logarithms. Now, the other way we could have done this, right, was, well, we could have graphed it. Okay, so we could actually graph it at any time. I could have graphed it at 800 is equal to 500 and then 1.024 to the power of x. I could have uh, graphed this side as my y1, graphed this side as my y2, and then just figure out where they cross. And then where they cross, I'm looking for my x value at that point, right? That would have worked. The numbers get pretty big though with the 800 and the 500. It would have been a little easier if we would have graphed it at this point. If we would have you know, divided both sides by 500 and had 1.6 is equal to 1.024 to the power of x. And then graph this is my y1 and this is my y2. That would have been nicer, right? I could probably see that from my standard window instead of trying to like, you know, figure out where, uh, how big I should make my window and everything else to, to find it. But it would work either way. Your x value, when you find those, will be the same x value no matter what. So you can graph it at any point. Okay, so either of those have worked, but you guys do need to use the logarithms as well, right? So the, the uh, long answer on your diploma would say, you know, how do you solve this, this question and then show your work algebraically and algebraically would be like this, okay? All right, and then this one says um, for B, modify the exponential function to reflect an interest rate of four percent uh compounded annually okay so this one was you know written like this right 1.024 right well what did that mean well you remember from above that would be y is equal to 500 times and then this is really like one plus uh 0.024 right so what what percentage were they using before well, that would be 2.4%, right? That's what they, that's what it originally was. And they want us to rewrite this thing at 4%. Okay, so let's do that. So that's just gonna be, yeah, it's already done for you there, but Y is equal to 500 times, and then 4% written as a decimal, 4%, that was a terrible percent, written as a decimal is 0.04, right? So that's just gonna be one point. 0, 0.04 to the power of x. Okay, so this is your percent increase on the other side of one, okay? All right, so let's look at this one. So they they want us to, well, here, let's read it. So a researcher discovered mold growing in a Petri dish in her laboratory. When first observed, the mold covered only 3% of the dish's surface. Every 24 hours, the sur surface area of the mold uh, doubles, that's a key word, doubles in size as shown in the table okay and then it says complete the table and then write an exponential function to model the growth of mold over time okay so if it's doubling in size right so the area covered would be three and then six and then doubling again right so double six would be 12 and then double 12 would be 24 and and now it wants us to write an, an exponential function for this so the, so the exponential function for this would just be y is equal to 
And then our, well, here, a times b to the x. And what's our a value? Well, our a value is where we started. And we started with, with 3%. Okay, so that's just going to be 3. And then we're doubling, right? We're doubling every time we go up. So we're safe to say that this is times 2. And then to the power of x. And this one can be a little bit tricky because x in this case, when we're just re referring to x, is the number of 24-hour periods that have gone by, right? So this would be the same thing as saying number of days. This could be like zero days, one day, two day, and three day, okay? So these are like the number of days that have gone by or the number of 24-hour periods. It'd be a little tougher if you were to, um, you know, break this up into like hours all the way across. And one reason for it too is it wouldn't be doubling every hour. So you'd have to figure out what that was per hour. So yeah, this, this is definitely the easiest way to think about it by day, so. Okay, next one, exponential decay. So the last one was exponential growth. And then the other, the other side of this coin is uh, exponential decay. So let's go back to our lily example. So now if you imagine you see a pond full of 2000 lilies, but a disease has started to kill many of them. You estimate that 30% of the lilies are dying each week. What is the general equation for the number of lilies after X number of weeks? Okay, so um, in this case, we start with 2,000 lilies, therefore our A is 2,000. So if we just, here, we'll write out our equation again. Y is equal to A, B to the X. So A is still gonna be where we start. So Y is equal to, and we're starting with a whole bunch this time, 2,000 times B to the X. But now the B value, this is where it, this is where it changes, is that the B value is, is um, going down, right, by 30%. It's killing 30% of them each week. So let's think about what our B value should be. So that'd be 2,000, and then our B value would be, and, and this is what a lot of people would think, is they'd be like, okay, this is 0 0.3, right, to the X. But, but that's not quite right. Because if you think about it, if we started with one, right? Like if it, if it was at one, a value of 100% or, or one to begin with, then isn't this actually 70% um, less, right? Because what we're doing here, if I go 0 0.3, I'm actually finding 30% of 2000 every time, right? So that's not right. What we need to do is we need to start with one, and then subtract 30% or 0 0.3. So then in that case, this would be y is equal to 2000 times 0 0.7x, right? So if, if everything's going down by 30% every week, that the other way of thinking about that is you're left with 70% every week. So that's kind of how we have to have to think about it, right? So yeah, so that'd be your, that'd be, um, your decay questions. Like I said, just careful on that because especially on diplomas, they're wanting to make sure that you understand that. And I guarantee one of the answers would just be 0 0.3 if it was like a multiple choice question. So they're looking that you that you understand that concept, okay? All right, next one. The next example are half-life questions. So a half-life is a variation of an exponential decay problem, right? So if you think about if 50% of the lilies from the example above were dying each week, then half of the lilies are dying each week, right? So our equation would be would be this, right? Zero, uh, 2,000 times 50%, right? 0 0.5. So just another way of writing that is as a half, right? So typically when you get a half-life question, we write it this way. Wouldn't matter though, you could do it the other way too. So now these are like our doubling time questions too, right? So if you go back up to our doubling time ones where we said that T value was the number, like how long it took or what the doubling time was, right? So the amount of time it took to double. It's gonna be the same idea with half-life questions, but our T value is gonna be the amount of time for half of it to remain. So we started off with a certain number of lilies and this would be the amount of time it takes for half of them to be, to be gone, okay? So yeah, so that's our general equation there, right? So if it says to find the number of lilies after 4.5 weeks, then what we would do is we could just put in 4.5 in place of X, right? And this one kind of worked out a little bit too easy because um, our, 
like how long it is for a half-life or a T value? Well, it's just one, right? Because we're saying that it, the half-life is every uh, week, right? So half of them are gone every week. All right, so I'll let you guys kind of look through these ones because it's, it's uh, similar to what I was just explaining there. So I think you'll be all right. It even gives you the right answer there. So, But I will go through this one. Just make sure you guys kind of get the idea on this. So it says, the half-life of carbon-14 is approximately 5,730 years. Okay, it, it's worth probably pausing for that for a second. So the half-life of carbon-14. So carbon-14 is a specific type of carbon um, that we actually use for dating things. Um, and it's 5,730 years. So what that means is after 5,730 years, however much carbon you had, so like if you had a ball of carbon like that, like a whole bunch of carbon, then after this many years, half of it has decayed into something else. Okay, so you only have half of that left at that point. Okay, so that's what we mean by half-life there. So anyway, as a sample of carbon-14 decays, the percentage of carbon-14 remaining, P, at any time during the process can be modeled by the function, and then they give us this function, right? So they're nice not to give us this function, but we understand what this means too, don't we? So remember how I had it written as Y is equal to A, B to the X over T? Well, that's what they have going on here too, right? So it's a half-life, so there you go, there's your half, right? We started off with probably 100 for 100%, okay? So that's like the percentage that we have to begin with which just really means we start with all of it, right? However much we started with. Um, and then here, our T is like our X in this way. They, they kind of wrote them with different variables, but our T is like our X, and that's the number of years that have gone by, right? The, how, how long has actually gone by. And then the bottom number here is the, like how long it is for the half-life, right? So that's like our T value that I've been talking about, okay? So it's good to understand how these work too, like not just use it. So this one says we're, uh, yeah, so T is the approximate age of the sample. And it says to the nearest year, determine the approximate age of carbon-14 when 33% of the original amount remains in the sample. Okay, so here, let's kind of follow this too. So we can say um, 33%, right? So if this is 33 is equal to 100 times a half to the power of t over 5,730, then we need to, yeah, solve for this one algebraically, right? So let's, let's divide both sides by 100 just to kind of make this a little easier. So 33 divided by 100 is 0 0.33, okay? And that's equal to one half to the power of t over 5,000 730. All right. Now, remember what our, what our problem is. If we're solving this thing algebraically, I can't solve for T if it's way up there, right? I need it down on the ground level. So how do we get it down to the ground level? Well, we take the log of both sides. So we could take the natural log. We could take the common log. But you know what? In the way that they've done it in this example too, just to make life easier, they took a log base a half, right? And I'll show you why they did that, because if we go log base one half of 0 0.33, and then we do the same on this side, we say, okay, and then we'll take log base a half of one half, ooh, that's looking good, of t over 5,730. Then what we can do, we can bring this one down, right? There's our... our uh, one of our log laws, so that worked out well. And then here is the whole, the whole magic of this, is that when I bring this thing down, I'll just do the right side for a second, we have T over 5,730 times, and then what is log base a half of a half? Well, that's just one, right? And I've talked about that a bunch in the other videos, so I won't go into it again, but that's why we, they chose a half. It would have worked fine. We could have used log base, whatever. That, that would have worked too. This just made life a little simpler, okay? So anyway, we have that. And then on this side, we just have log a half of 0 0.33, okay? So then all we have left to do here now is just multiply both sides by 5,730, okay? So that would end up being 5,730 times log base one half 
of 0 0.33, okay? And then that's equal to T. All right, now if you have a TI Inspire, it actually works out pretty well. You can just write in log base a half pretty easy. But I, never, I, don't, I can't remember if I showed you guys on the TI-84 how to do the same. So on a TI-84, it's kind of a hidden feature. You, you don't have to write it this way. You could write it as, like if you have log base a half of 0 0.33. Well, I showed you one of the other videos. That would be the same thing as just going log of 0 0.33 divided by log of a half, right? It's just the log of the top and then the log of the bottom, right? So, so that'd be divided by log of one divided by two. Okay, and then that'd be fine, right? You can write it in like that. But the other little hidden feature on here too, if you if you type in alpha and then F2, you get a few other options here. And you can see that one of them is log base. So then you can go down to that one, go down to log base. Whoop, I went too far. So enter. And now what that does is it allows us just to type it in just the way we want it. So I can go log and then put my base down there. So I can go, I think I can do a half, one divided by two down there. Okay. And then over and then type in 0 0.33. So 0 0.33. So then you can type it in just like that and we get we should get the same answer, right? Um, yeah, but either way. Just wanna make sure you guys knew how to type that into your calculator properly. So I guess here, while I have it there, that, it was that number times 5,700. 5,730. Okay, so 9,164. Okay, so we're right there. So in the end, yeah, our sample is approximately 9,165 years old, which is how, how we date things, right? We, we know what the half-life is on carbon-14, so we can use this equation to actually like tell how old some civilization was, right? Which is, which is neat.